Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. Now, today I'm going to answer a question that I've been asked several times over the last 12 months, and it's can you fertilize or can you feed an Nepenthes pitcher plant? Now, I have to confess, this is something that I've only just recently discovered, and uh, I think we'll get into it straight after the intro. And we are in. So, this is my Nepenthes. Rebecca Soper. It's a cross and it's not the biggest of my Nepenthes plants but it's certainly doing particularly well and what are we now February beginning of February and it's doing really really well compared to like how it's done in the past. Now these pictures these very beautiful wide peristome with a big wide fleur on the peristome pictures these are the biggest that I've actually ever had on this particular hybrid Nepenthes so these two here that are spooning that's going to be a nice big one nice large plant so it is doing really well and the question is why is it doing so well now I did do a video I made a couple of videos actually on how to get your Nepenthes to grow more pictures and I have carried out those things. I didn't, you know, they're not just there for other people to view. They are there for me too. It's a nice little reminder for myself. I'm not going to go through all those different things. This is just coming off with a new growth at the top there. There's another new one coming off there. Um, I won't go through all those various things. You can watch that video. I'll put a, a card up to those or a couple of cards up to those two videos. One's a bit more lengthy and one is like a shortened version if you... A bit short on time you can go and watch those but this came about from a question that I had quite recently and I've had this question several times over the past 12 months and it's about growing Nepenthes and whether you can feed them now I want to distinguish between feeding and fertilizing now obviously the scientific term the actual feeding of a plant isn't something we can do we talk very often about feeding plants and what we mean is fertilizing them plants produce their own food but of course Nepenthes are completely different in that they almost fertilize themselves because they catch their prey so the question really is kind of split into two in that one of the questions is that can you feed them in terms of or can you fer fertilize them in terms of dropping something into that picture and the other one is can you actually fertilize them like you would traditionally fertilize a plant i.e in the roots and of course there's the third version which is giving them a foliar feed now the most common feeling among plant enthusiasts who grow carnivorous plants is that the more you feed them the less likely they are to produce pictures or to produce uh, whatever it is whatever form traps you know whatever it is that they use to catch their prey now this isn't going to be an issue if you happen to be in a place where there are lots of insects so for me all through the summer i'm in a greenhouse all these vents are open and these traps do an absolutely marvelous job of collecting the flies and the other insects that are around about the greenhouse so it also keeps all the flies away from other plants but usually you know once these vents are open these very very quickly fill up and they don't seem to be able to get enough and it doesn't create any kind of early death to the trap I've seen people drop osmocote pellets into the traps okay now the people that I've seen do that the traps have very quickly died off now whether that actually does any harm to the plant or not I don't know but I don't want my traps to die off so early I want them to produce lots and lots of beautiful traps like this so I don't really recommend dropping anything into the unless it's an insect or a dried insect or I believe some of the things that you can get for fishing, some of those dried worms, uh, maybe they can go in. Anything like that, absolutely perfect. So you can either go and catch them or you can go and buy these dried things from the shops or from Amazon or whatever it is fishing people get them from. So that is perfectly fine. I wouldn't recommend dropping an os osmocote pellet in for the reason that I've just explained. So for me, summertime, it doesn't really make any difference. I'm not going to drop anything into these pictures in summertime. Wintertime is the issue. So how come, despite my greenhouse being full up and none of these pictures are collecting any food of their own 
how come they're looking so good at the moment? Well, I think it was quite by accident, actually, but I've since looked it up, and as it turns out, it is a thing. And this is where many Nepenthes growers, or at least some Nepenthes growers, uh, might not be quite aware of this. So there are two kind of accepted Bibles, and I'm doing Bibles in inverted commas here, for people who grow Nepenthes or grow carnivorous plants in general. So we'll just move over to the couple of books that I'm talking about. Now, you may have heard of these. So we've got The Savage Garden <clears throat> by Peter D'Amato, and we've got Insect Eaters by Adrian Slack. So these are the two go-to books that people who grow carnivorous plants tend to go for. I can't say I've read them start to finish. What I tend to do is use them as a reference. So I've looked up feeding Nepenthes. Now I'm talking about fertilizing here. I'm not talking about dropping things into those traps. We've already covered that. So I'll have to refer to my notes here while I tell you what it is. I'm just carry on looking at this Nepenthes over here. Well, I'll tell you this is what they actually say, which was quite a shock to me. It was quite surprising to me because I know in one of my other videos, I recommended doing the exact opposite. And unfortunately on YouTube, you can't go back and change it. It's the, also the other information is absolutely spot on, but this is new, as I say, to me. So Peter D'Amato, he says that you can feed Nepenthes pitcher plants and they do in fact benefit from it and he says that in summer you feed them twice monthly and in winter you feed them uh, once monthly with a foliar feed and he tells you to use diluted fertilizer now unfortunately he doesn't tell you what proportions to dilute it in he doesn't tell you what fertilizer he doesn't give you any more information than to give it dilute fertilizer so I'll tell you what I've been using I've been using orchid feed. Now I feed all my orchids that I've got in here and I've got plenty of orchids. I feed them at roughly 200 parts per million. Some of them I feed them a little bit more. Some of them I feed them a little bit less. But my standard feed, which I've got in this container here, this trug, is around about 200 parts per million. And I use something called rain mix, which is like a an industry standard orchid feed. You can use any general purpose orchid feed, really. And what I've been doing is I've been spraying them. Now, I'm not really in a position to be counting off how often I spray them. I just spray them whenever I'm in here and I remember to do it, I give them a spray. And I wonder whether that's what's made them, or partly anyway, what made them do so well this year. They certainly didn't grow like this last year or the year before. It could also be some of the other factors. It could also be the fact that the plant's more established. But if somebody of the eminence of Peter D'Amato is telling you that it's a good thing to do, then it must be a good thing to do. So let's see what Adrian Slack has to say about it. And while we do that, I'll point you at one of my other Nepenthes that seems to be benefiting from this feed. So this one is Nepenthes burkii, and this is still producing pictures even in February. So Adrian Slack says, and he goes into a little bit more detail, he says that Nepenthes actually benefit from, and listen to this, a high nitrogen liquid feed to the roots, weekly in summer and monthly in winter. So he reckons that if you get some high nitrogen feed, now high nitrogen feed with something like tomato feed is a high nitrogen feed, so it's not anything particularly special, but it's something that you tend to give lots of plants if you want them to bloom through the summer months. So he says you should feed the roots with high nitrogen feed. Um, again, he doesn't tell you how much. He doesn't tell you uh, what you should dilute it, what, you two, what your parts per million should be. That's for you to experiment with. Uh, he also says a quarter strength foliar feed. So he backs up what Peter D'Amato said. So I want you to put in the comments for me. Is this something that you are familiar with? Have you had a go at feeding your, and again, I'm talking about the fertilizing bit here. We know you can drop things into the pitchers, but have you had a go at actually feeding the roots of Nepenthes with a high nitrogen liquid feed? Or have you had a go at spraying them with a, a dilute feed of some sort? Let me know in the comments what your thoughts and experiences are on that. So I have to say I haven't tried feeding the roots of Nepenthes as of yet, but I'm very encouraged by that. I'll certainly give it a go. For me, 
during the summer they're going to catch as much as they catch and that should do it but during the winter i realize they're all doing pretty well with the foliar feed but of course being gardeners and growers we want our plants to grow even better don't we i'll let you know in a couple of months time once i've given it a go myself what actually happened so that's it for now i'll see you on the next one bye